This episode of Destructoid is brought to you by Jack Threads. Welcome to Destructoid, I'm Tara Long. And I'm Max Scoville, and now that Mass Effect 3 is behind us, thankfully for us, uh, it is time to focus on GDC, the annual Game Developers Conference, which is happening right here in San Francisco, and with it comes some of the smartest, most creative, just wonderful, intelligent folks that the industry has to offer. Uh, as well as some analysts, and so today we decided to have a, a couple couple guys come join us. Um, Welcome, I've got Mr. Kevin Dent and uh, Jesse Divnik. Am I saying that correctly? Yes, that's, you said you said two analysts. I just see one. Though. Oh, yeah, oh, so, so snap! Talking, like, the wow, snaps have this is, oh, be the whole thing. You're like, oh, there's two analysts, and I was waiting for the second analyst. I'm hoping Michael was going to show up or something. <laughs> okay, so you, you guys are you, one of you is an industry analyst. What exactly do you do? What is how? What is this this why, thing? Why should do? we believe what you have to say at all? is the question, really. I think that's two different answers. I don't know if you want to go first. Okay, I'll go first. Basically what I do is I represent uh, game developers. Uh, I give them money. Uh, I find money for them down the back of the couch and stuff like that, you know, so, so that's basically what I do. Prize clients included David Jaffe and uh, Rob Moto and a few other guys. Okay. So do you make predictions about the industry at all? Yeah. Okay, yeah. great. Well, that's what we're going to have you do today for us. Mm -hmm. And uh, Jesse, you work uh, for ER. Yeah, I'm the vice president of uh, insights and uh, analysts or analysis with EDAR. Sorry, I just got a new role. Changes every six months. Um, but you know, EDAR, we're, we're a decent side re research firm, about 40, 50 people deep. Uh, we essentially just help uh, developers and publishers try to make the best game possible. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, well, using data, obviously, we're very uh, objectively driven. You know, we have a data. We actually have a Guinness Book of World Records for the largest data set in video games. Really? So, yeah, hand collect. We have 62 million hand collected facts. We actually have about uh, 20 researchers back in, in Carlsbad that are do nothing all day but play games. And we literally play every game. There's not a single game we do not play. We have to classify it, research wow. it. So, if you wanted to ask, like, uh, you know, what percentage of games have leading female characters? With a couple of click of the buttons, we could tell you that. And then we can give you the correlation to reviews and sales and marketing well, and... Well, see, Tara and I are we're, we're journalists, or you know, at least critics or whatever, so what we do is generally coming from like a, you know, opinion sort of... Pundit perspective. Less technical, yeah. we're l less qualified to do, to say things. So we're gonna ask you guys some things yeah. and see how, how you handle it, because you've Basically, got to... what I, I'm in between you guys. Okay. okay, I work off of data and stuff you hear uh, from industry inside. So let's uh, start you guys off with a first question, shall we? Yeah, you ready to do that? that let's, let's hop right into this. Now, Mass Effect 3 just mm -hmm. came out, as you guys probably know. Actually, 2012 is kind of the year of sequels. We've got Borderlands 2 coming out, Assassin's Creed 3, we've got Halo 4, Max Payne 3. I want to know what each of you guys thinks is going to be the big sequel this year, and why do you think it's going to be successful? And Jesse, we're going to start with you. Isn't every year the year of the sequel? I mean, look, yes, what, what but was, it's now what especially was, because what was, I just what, said it was. Look at Holiday 11. It was Uncharted 3. It was the year of 3. Uncharted 3. We had Modern Warfare 3, Battlefield 3. Eh, what else? So there was a couple other ones. But then, of course, you know, Skyrim, Batman. Yeah, 2011 was definitely the year of threes. Yes. Uh, Gears of War 3. That's what I was thinking of. In terms of, you know, the biggest sequel this year, I mean, I think without a doubt, it has to be Grand Theft Auto. Right? Really? It has yeah. to be. I mean, Grand Theft Auto, I mean, okay, Call of Duty, Grand Theft Auto, there's that whole debate. Uh, but I think they're both going to do equally well. It's going to be a good race. I think it's going to be a very good race between those two. And, um, you know, I don't know when Grand Theft Auto is coming out. But I was going to say, do you think there's a chance it might be delayed? I hope, well, I mean, <laughs> if you look at history, they, t they tend to, 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 to delay it a lot, but, you know, they're, from a financial perspective, they have to release it within Take-Two's, you know, fiscal year, so it has to come before March. So, you know, I think, personally, an October release date is best, but mm -hmm. uh, um, those guys will not release a game until it's finished. I mean, they will not launch a game until it's at least a 90-plus rated game, so they will take their time. And they can, right? I mean, we can all wait for it. We can wait. We have no problem waiting. Yeah, well, we have no choice. I need it now. This is really and what it's about. the kids watching at home, they are, they are <laughs> thank you so much for bringing that up, because now we get to put that in the you know the search search keyword, so right, yeah. Grand Theft Auto Five. you said it. Oh, well, yeah. Got it. <laughs> so, Kevin, your rebuttal? Uh, twofold, okay, so there's the financial impact, and that's going to be between uh, Call of Duty and Black Ops, uh, which will come out uh, in Q4, and Assassin's Creed. There's a few, like there's Assassin's Creed is coming out, it, 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 she's right and you're wrong, it is the year of the sequel, 
okay? There's never been as many AAA sequels coming out in one year. Okay, you've got Assassin's Creed, Mass Effect 3, Borderlands 2, which is, an, like for me, the game I'm personally looking forward to most mm -hmm. is Borderlands 2. Hands down. No that problem. is the correct answer, yes. Well, wait a second. Yeah. <laughs> you said more sequels this year than last year? I'll, I'll, I'm going to bring up the data. AAA. Really? AAA. Well. All right, I'll, I'll just run the data. And I'm going to email it, because I know this is going to go through. Okay. This will be a few days before you guys Here see this. We and, will... and on the screen, you can put, Kevin was wrong. We will verify this after the episode comes out. Oh, I, I We can, won't do yeah, that. We, no, we got, no we got the tools. Yeah. I can, right after this shoot, I can bring yeah. it up. Jesse, new title okay. is Kevin's Bitch. Oh boy, oh boy, you guys. Okay, so uh, Kevin, well, there's rumors flying around right now that Valve might be unveiling hardware, like a Steam box, or perhaps a Gabe Boy. That's yeah. my joke. Yeah. Um, <laughs> do you see this actually happening? And if so, do you see it being uh, successful? You need to pronounce your B's a lot better, just in case. Steam okay. box. <laughs> but, <laughs> so, uh, with those guys, they're mad fuckers. You know, like, they, you never know with Gabe. Gabe you know, it'll say, like, fuck it, you want uh, Half-Life 3? Okay, and that's fine, he can do it, okay? He's earned that right, okay? Uh, a friend of mine works there and he said when they said they were delaying Half-Life 2 uh, the first time, there were people sending, it, someone sent a box, <laughs> like a suspicious box. Oh, <laughs> to, like making him think that it was a bomb or exactly, something? Exactly, exactly, oh, you know? Yeah. Like, people out there are That's nuts. That's gamers for you. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so you don't want to delay it too much. So, like, with GTA, those guys just don't care. They're, they're mad as well. But in, going back to your question, uh, no, I don't think they will. I think if they do, they're stupid. Yeah. Okay. You, th you don't think it'll ever happen, or you just don't think it'll happen? I don't think year? it will ever happen, because they need... It, they've got the games, they've got the library, but you've got to remember that you've got to get the developers, and big publishers, to commit to porting it to that platform changing of the controls. Remember, these are all PC games, okay? Why do I want to play a P PC game in front of my TV? I've got a PC for that, you know? Mm. Well, I mean, I don't think, I mean, I see, I've seen the rumors, and I, I don't necessarily believe that they're going to launch with their own hardware, like a proprietary hardware, like a PlayStation or an, or an, or an Xbox, but I, th I, th I think we're going to see Steam growing much more uh, uh, from a service perspective. Right now, we can only experience Steam on our PCs. Right, well think about expanding that to televisions, or expanding that to, which I disagree, I think people will play PC games on, on their televisions, but that's fine. Uh, iPads, iPhones, tablets, I mean, you think of that as a service, very similar to OnLive. Like, OnLive is its own platform, but it's not proprietary, it's just PC, it's just a PC port. So, that's the way I would view it, and I, in terms of, is it gonna happen, I, yeah, I'll say right now, I, I believe that probably in the next 12 to 16 months they're going to make a move. They have to. I mean, Origin right now is, I wouldn't say crushing them, but they're certainly putting a lot of pressure on Valve to make a move. And they're flush with cash. I mean, they got a lot of cash. So that or, you know, maybe we see an acquisition. Who knows? Oh, okay. So the rebuttal there is pretty straightforward, okay? Gabe is a very generous and charitable man. And I think my suspicion is that if they do bring out uh, a console, no, listen. If they do bring out a console, the, the only reason they'll do so is so Nintendo don't have the biggest piece of crap console on the market with the mm. Wii U. Uh, that brings me to my next question, actually. <laughs> um, we know we're getting the Wii U this year now. Mm -hmm. Do you think that Nintendo is going to be able to capture consumers and, and make them want to play console games on a tablet device? Do you think they're going to be able to talk people into doing that? And do you think it'll be successful? Absolutely not. It's a dog. It's DOA. Okay. Really? DOA. Okay. Mm. It's a it's a family based device. Okay. You've got two, let's say you've got two kids. Okay. Two kids are sitting in the living room. Okay. One has the cool tablet. The other one has a dildo. Okay. <laughs> what's the what's the dildo? The the old stick. Oh, so that's what you use it for. Okay. I'm just okay. yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, but I just call it a controller. My point is, is that fine. they've got it completely wrong. Okay. I could not pay an idiot, okay, to come up with a worse idea for, for a console. There is no way this is going to be around. They are Sega. That's what I'm calling them mm. now. Wow. So you don't think it'll sell even with the casual It'll sell market? with the Nintendo fanboys, of course. It always do. But like, it won't be enough to... It won't be broad. It won't be the Wii. To be profitable? Yeah, it won't be the Wii. The, the Kinect is much better. Move is much better. Mm. And that's saying something. Oof. You know? 
Jesse, your response? You know, I think that it, it depends on how Nintendo really messages message this to consumers, developers, and, and publishers. If they treat this like they're trying to compete with Xbox and, and, and PlayStation, they're going to have a very difficult time. Look, mobile games, tablet games, social games, they are impacting traditional, traditional video games. There's just not enough room for three home consoles that are all targeting the same market. And so far to date, all I've seen is, you know, a new Assassin's Creed and Call of Duty and Battlefield are all coming to the Wii U, and it's like, why on earth would I buy that for the Wii U? I just buy it for the X. I've, you know, I have a gamer score or a PlayStation mm -hmm. Network account. I'm just going to keep buying it for the system, where they can succeed and really surprise us. And I don't, I don't ever underestimate Nintendo. You're right. Every now and then, the Virtual Boy, the Micro GB, GPA or GBA has been flops, but they've done Actually, things. They've retrofitted the U draw. It looks like the same top. They, but they have done things that have blown us away. We were all there in 2005 when they first unveiled the Wii, and we. Half the room, I think not even half the room, the majority of the room was like, what the hell is this? The Wii, you know, everybody thought it was a stupid idea. And then, you know, we'll, we'll okay, it out. Two kids were holding dildos then. Okay. <laughs> but the, the thing is, I just don't underestimate them. They're the most powerful brands in, this, in, in the industry. Uh, they know what they're doing. They, 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 they understand their consumers. I just hope they are not trying to neglect the, the casual more... Uh, the, the casual playing experience. Casual we all, like, we all own Wii, right? We, we call Wii a kind of a casual family system, but we're all hardcore gamers. We all own the Wii. Yeah. Because sometimes we want that experience. Well, here's, here's the fact, okay? There's a, a small company in Boston just starting out now called Brass Monkey Games, okay? They've created a solution that turns your iPhone or your Android device into a Wii. Okay, you don't need any software on the TV. All you need is a smart TV with a HTML5 browser, which most smart TVs now have. You can play golf. You swing it like a golf club. Boom! You can play tennis. It does the is same thing. Is there an thing. emulator? Do you have to download an emulator no, under your no, phone? No, it's all done on HTML5. Oh. It's oh. it's an interesting concept. Yeah, and I think that's that is certainly the future. I think when we talk about you know 2020, what, we're going to. I was starting with like. 25 people is nipping at your heels, you're in the shithouse, Jesse. Oh, I, I so, just, okay, I just so, so from what I gather, you think it'll flounder and fail. You think there's promise there that Nintendo might surprise I think the CEO should be, should be fired now. Uh, which, just save themselves. Of Japan? Okay, so, so yeah. the thing is, this is the first it's, we've seen of the, of the next-gen hardware that's coming our way. What, uh, what are we going to see from Microsoft and Sony? That's the big question on everybody's minds. We're not going to see anything I mean, from Microsoft uh, until the sales starts. Are they working on the new, new console? What do, you, what do you see coming I absolutely about? believe yeah. they're working on it. I think it's going to be a hybrid of like an online solution and the traditional uh, solution with a much larger uh, solid-state drive. And I think that console is here and it's going to be here to stay. People are going to want to play games, you know, like... Uh, that are of the Gears of War variety, of the Borderlands variety. You're not going to get that uh, in the cloud. I, I think Unlive has uh, a great concept behind it. I'm more of a believer of Gaikai, uh, which is very similar to it. But uh, with Gaikai, I get pretty much high definition. With uh, Unlive, it looks like someone, you know, jacked off on my TV set. Okay, so just not your TV set. It's probably a good chance that's exactly. I'd say 60-inch TV set. You know, I'm not that big. But uh, close. Uh, you know, oh, next, look, look. Microsoft and Sony, uh, they're they're doing well right now with the Xbox 360 and the PS4. And publishers are actually making money. Publishers are making money off their games. And our industry has historically transitioned horribly. We just transition horribly. There's always like when new hardware launches, it's always just one or two years where we're just throwing so much money at R and D that we become unprofitable. So I don't think anybody is wanting a next generation system. Do I think they should launch it? For sure, I think they should launch it this holiday. Are they going to? Of course not. That's obviously way too much. That's idiotic. Okay, why would you launch it this holiday season when you're selling like gangbusters? Xbox I, I is think number they, one constantly. But I think they need to be more proactive and understand, they need to understand that, uh, that oh. the okay, industry so is evolving. Speaking of things that, that get launched uh, not necessarily near the holidays, uh, what about the Vita? How do we see that doing right now? It's, it's so... I've got this mantra, it's great but late. Best handheld gaming device I've ever played. I really enjoy it. It's way overpriced. They made a huge fuck up using AT&T as a partner. AT&T yeah. is the worst carrier in North America, by far, okay? They just, like last year at the presser, you are probably there, uh, they made the announcement of AT&T yeah, being a partner. Was a they were booed and <laughs> laughed at. And he was, he was shocked. He was just, he had the shit knocked out of him on stage. 
because he was like, ooh, 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 ooh. What, what where was, are people what was he booing? doing when they when they like chose that? Like, who, yeah. what, did he not like consumer <laughs> reports? You know, he clearly does not own a cell phone. Google, <laughs> yeah. Google, dude. Somebody, somebody made a wrong decision. But as far on as that as far one. as the the platform of the of the Vita, it, it's does great. it have I love, potential? I think it's like I said. I think it's great, but late. It's yeah. not going to make it. It's uh, you know, as long as third party supports it and they make great titles, then I don't think it's going to be an issue. I think the market is big enough for for both the three DS. But it's not going to be not going to be a Wii. It's not going to revolutionize. No, 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 of course. And I don't think that's, a, that, that, they're not expecting that. But what I will say is that, look what happened with the 3DS. Came out, and the sales were kind of lackluster, and we were, all, we were all ragging on those guys really bad. I mean, we were putting them down. Yeah, we did that too. So yeah, it's, and, but, but where are they now, right? They're, they're actually doing quite fine. So somewhere. I mean, they're losing money, yeah, that's not good. You got to understand, okay, that like, we're in a different situation. Like, I get shit sent to me for free all the time, okay? There's a guy in Ohio, okay, in his basement just coming home from work right now, okay, and he's working two jobs, okay. He's got a choice. Do I buy an iPhone, okay? It's cool, I can play games on it, they're 99 cents. Are they as good as the Vita? No. But are they good enough? Yeah. You know, they give you that 10 minute content snack that, you know, gets you through the bus ride home. Right. Very cool. Well, Very cool. Well, that um, actually concludes the first portion of our debate. Uh, we're going to take a quick break to thank our sponsor, and then we will be back with more questions. Only suckers pay full price, so if you love alternative apparel brands like Kid Robot, Hurley, and Stussy, but hate wasting all your cash on them, listen up. You can score these premium brands at up to 80% off every day. There's a new invite-only shopping club in town called Jack Threads, and they are serving up your favorite street skate and surfwear brands at prices that will melt your brain. There is a wait list to join, but if you head to jackthreads.com slash destruct, you'll get instant access to all the killer clothes without even having to leave the house. Again, that link is jackthreads.com slash destruct, and every sign up helps support the show. Okay, and we're back. So Max and I had a couple of personal questions that we wanted to ask you guys. Is that cool, just to get your uh, professional opinion on them? Professional, personal? They're yeah, it's all the same. Professional opinion on personal questions. Okay. Yes, okay. You want to ask them here or so, maybe in the W later? Um, uh, just I'll save me. my other questions for that later. <laughs> okay. All right. So, um, Jessica Chobot. Ooh. You guys know Jessica yeah. Chobot, yes. right? Yeah. Okay, she, uh, she came under some fire recently yep. for uh, previewing Mass Effect for the IGN channel and uh, then shortly after revealing that she was a non-playable character in the game. Mm -hmm. More recently, um, tonight in fact, her husband Blair Herder will be doing a review of Mass Effect 3 on his show X-Play. So obviously this presents a little bit of a moral dilemma. Um, there's kind of a conflict of interest here. Her previewing a game that she is actually a character in my question for you guys is, do you think that I am hotter than her, and could I take her in a fight? And before you answer, consider my cripplingly low self-esteem. Okay. Oh, yeah. The, yeah. If you calculate the low <coughs> self-esteem, mm -hmm. I think uh, for sure, for sure. Now, is that the actual question, or is it the Yes, that's the question. That's the question. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <punch. laughs> I was getting wind up here, you know. Here we she go. Has, uh, you know what? I, I, oh, I've been think... married for 12 years, so it's like, I, you know. I, oh, yeah. I know how it goes. Yeah, exactly. So <laughs> I, I, watch, I wife watches this show every day. <laughs> My wife is going to watch this, too. Backpedaling? What is this? I'm afraid that is the incorrect answer. Yeah, I think you're super I think hot. It's, thank you. You're like super hot. Thank you. Know? Since marrying that, that Blair Herder, she, she could be like, Jessica Hurtbot now, which is a scarier name. Hurtbot? But you have those arms. Oh, she beat me in an arm wrestling contest. Really? I'd, I'd like to see that. I've got I'd surprising man It's strength. really unusual. I think it's because she's from Texas and throws hay bales at things. True. That was okay, I'm sorry. Question. I'm sorry. The question was terrible. Okay, I have a serious question. Um, so, in this in this generation, but in the last ten years or so, we've seen sort of more uh, more video game creators, directors who are given given kind of a name value, like more mm -hmm. of a, a directorial role. You know, Cliffy B, Gabe Newell, you know, mm -hmm. Hideo Kojima, they all have more of a uh, recognizable name. David you know? Jaffe. Exactly, David Jaffe. You know, what stuff, are, you, what, like, what's, are, you, are you married to him? Is I, that, I, I'm a huge fan. He gave me five bucks. He said the name. I'm a huge yeah. fan. <laughs> he's, oh, he's a great guy, but every time I talk to Kevin, he's, Jaffe comes up. I yeah, don't know. How. I'm a huge fan. Okay. You know? That's fine. That's fine. Okay. He's well, a good friend as well. So, anyway, these, these guys who have actually, they suddenly have like a, like a name, you know, name value. They, are, do you see that. Uh, um, Games uh, getting more of sort of uh, more creative leeway if if a if a particular person wants to make them. Oh, is yeah. that yeah? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I actually had a um, follow up to that. Um, who would win in a fight, me or Peter Molyneux? You know, I don't 
dislike the guy. I'm just. You, I, you would let him win. Ever hear him talk? Ever you see him present? He just. Mm. He just. It's so relaxing. It's, it's just so like. So relaxing. So like, keep talking, Peter. And we saw. Uh, uh, a preview for Fable Journey, or you know, where you pet the horse, and I'm pet like, you know, I, I I didn't get the game, right? Like, but it was him talking. I'm just like, just keep telling me more. Tell he me might not be okay able to beat here. you in a fight, but he can sure as hell seduce you. It's so, like which of you would win in a fight against uh, each me. other? Me. <laughs> you really? <laughs> yeah. You think? Okay, so. So the viewers should know, okay? Jesse was demanding flowers in the green room. Wow. He was demanding makeup and his hair done professionally. Okay, before getting here, it was like pretty sad. That's completely And then he picked up the destructive dildo all, and started kissing it. Oh, oh really? My God. I think I saw that. Is, that. That's just a you know, terrible <laughs> industry. This is, this is, you're putting me in a tough campaign. position. I, then, I think I could take. Oh, let's stand and up. Then he went to the up. bathroom. Okay, well, this, got, is, a, okay, this got, is taking a bad turn. Okay, I got, <laughs> sit down, I got, guys. Sit down. Time out. Okay, that's it. There, got, there's going to be a winner wait. here, a, and uh, we want you guys, the audience, to pick the winner of our big analyst showdown. Just wait until the end of the video and then click on either Kevin or Jesse's video. We're going to use our computer math machine to tabulate the results. Tabulation. And the number of clicks for each video, and then we're going to decide the winner and it will be inaccurate as hell but that is how we fucking we, roll we so do this that's gonna so happen well, I should ask in, in the heart who, who do you think won this it wasn't much of a debate but I would love to see who would win in a fight it's like me. if we like a regulated <laughs> UFC type fight just to, just honest, to, Jesse yes well, we can I, go I got weight go I got weight on you we go down to the double no, no, no. some fight yeah <laughs> <laughs> he fights dirty though he's, he's, an, he's an Irishman he's Irish, he fights yeah, dirty we, I mean, I'm, I'm Irish too but it's you know it's just a already oh that's right after the show guys after the show thank you guys so much for coming on and uh you guys can you can follow these guys on Twitter. It is it is the Kevin Dent and then just Jesse Divnick. And yep. we have we have the, the things that are gonna show up on the screen. And of course I am at Max Scoville and she is at Tara Longest, and then we have at Detoid Show, and I think that's enough. Here on Friday at 3.30 p.m. Pacific time, sharp for our Friday live show. Lots of fun things in the works for that. But until then, we're gonna be releasing a ton of content from GDC all week. So make sure you're subscribed to this channel and also to youtube.com slash rev3games. Our new home away from home. Please subscribe. Please to subscribe. Them. Go and then do that. we will be friendly. Yes. And uh, we'll see you back here on Friday. Thank Bye you guys, guys again Thank for you, joining us. Yeah, and thanks for watching. Sure. Cheers. Arm wrestle. Let's go. <laughs>